So we're going to talk about the IOs, the first option here, internal operations. Super important, right? We're going to recover receiving, picking, producing, shipping, monitoring, all that stuff internal that happens within your business, inside of your business. So the internal operations is how you're going to be able to get your products in and out to Amazon as fast as humanly possible, right? We bring in truckloads every day. We ship seven truckloads in a five-day work week to Amazon fulfillment centers. And the reason we can do that is because we get it in and out in less than 24 hours. In less than one workday, we're getting full truckloads, 26 pallets, broken down, received, picked, staged, brought to packing stations, produced, brought to shipping stations, loaded onto trucks, and shipped out. Seven full truckloads in a five-day work. So what that would look like for you to duplicate this process, right? There's seven stages. It's pretty simple. The inventory comes into your facility. Whether you're in your garage, it's even better if you start when you're smaller because then when you begin to scale, it'll be that much easier. It's just a matter of making some tweaks to the size of your business. But it starts, you unload it, right? You get it out of the truck. You put it preferably in a receiving area, a designated area where the inventory goes so you know, hey, this is inbound. This hasn't been touched yet. We didn't even look at this yet. Right? And then you start the breakdown process. You got to check for discrepancies. We ordered 120, only got 118. Am I going to report the two? Is it only two? Is it worth reporting the two? Do I just eat it? You know, are we short 60? Do we get 60 over? You want to communicate that with your vendors and distributors so you're not leaving money on the table. But One of the things we also communicate early on with a supplier, distributor, and wholesaler in our relationships is expiration. Many of you know that Amazon requires certain expiration dates for certain products. It's become a little bit more specific, so we've had to transition and make changes. However, a majority of our products are about 120 days. Some a little bit longer, but typically we need 120 days. And because we communicated that early on and built the relationships, that also is considered part of that discrepancy. Not only shortages, not only overages, not only damage, but if a product comes in with less than 120 days, we can return it, no questions. And I didn't forget about y'all YouTube folks out there. So in the comments, put where you're from. Carlos, if you see those comments anywhere, I wanna know what the furthest country away is, because we appreciate everybody. Throw some fire emojis in those comments as well. We appreciate you attending this event as well. So after the inventory is received, it's broken down, right? A discrepancy is documented, it's reported back to the company. Then you gotta add products to an Amazon ship, right? And then those products need to be picked meaning that they're actually moved from one location to a production station over to staging, right? So it's the full process. You receive the inventory, you count the, the invoice, make sure it's accurate, you report the discrepancy, and then you pick it for what's going on the Amazon shipment, and then you stage it at the front of a production station. And communicate with your suppliers their discrepancy time. Some suppliers need it within 24 hours. Mm. Some will wait a week. You need to build that relationship and ask those questions so you're not sending it three days later and they're saying hey, we needed it within two business days and you're shit out of luck. So how many people love looking at their profit margin every day? Oh yeah. I, I love that shit too. It's one of the first things I do. I love it. I love it. It gets my juices flowing, you know? Just get souped up. Woke up, wake out of bed, coffee, prayer, coffee, car, podcast, profit margin. You know, we gotta create an acronym for that with a t-shirt. Because it's exciting. Right, but don't get too focused on the profit margin, especially who's in your first two years of business? Probably a lot of you, right? Awesome, so about a third of you in your first two years of your business. Right, in the first two years of your business, you should be focused on, especially if you're doing a wholesale business model, right, even retail arbitrage. You should be focused on moving a lot of inventory for a few reasons. Account health metrics, Amazon trusts you more, the customer feedback, buy box priority, because the more you sell on Amazon, the more listings you're on, the more Amazon prioritizes you and puts you in that magical buy box. Who loves the buy box? I love the buy box, right? The buy box is amazing, everybody wants the buy box. Most of the shopping have is on cell phones where people aren't even looking that tiny little, how small is that letter? You need glasses to see it. It's like, click on 11 more sellers. It's just buy box. I want it now, 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 now. Instant gratification. <laughs> Right, so a lot of people spend too much time focused on that profit margin. That's not to say profit margin isn't crucial. Right? Profit margin is super important. You need to be making money. If you're not making money, you're not going to be taking care of the kids we were talking about before. Or your family. Or yourself. We're big picture people. So when Eric's saying profit margin, 
it's, he, what he means is that it's not the only piece of the puzzle. And too many businesses just look at how much am I going to make off this one order? Is it 10%? Is it 20%? And they're not looking at how many orders can I move in a month if I drop my profit margin by 2%? How many will I move in a year? How better will my relationship be with my supplier if I'm placing orders more frequently? How much more feedback will I have which will help me get the buy box? All these other pieces of the puzzle are lost by the illusion of just looking at the profit margin. So a lot of things that drop in your profit margin you do is give you happier suppliers because you're able to increase your order size, right? Better pricing. And we get to efficiency. We're talking about our production station. Right? So let's say that the day when this table was a production station. Right? I would literally, the less your employees move, your your packers, the less they move, the more money. So I just, I don't want them stepping over here. I don't want them stepping over there. I want them standing right here. And everything is in arm's reach. Because every step they take, I lose money. You lose money. Who likes losing money? Show of hands. Nobody. Who likes making money? Show of hands. Awesome, right? That's why we're all here. We grow our businesses. That's why you came out. That's why this guy came from San Francisco. To make more money. So the less movement your employees make, the more money you make. You gotta have these systems in it. Go over shipping. And I just want to touch on one more thing when it comes to production. So when we showed you that screen early on in warehouse number two with the tables, we would have a few different of our warehouse workers on the same table, but they each individually be working on putting components and building ACEs, right? Putting ACEs together, prepping. They would do the whole process. We learned quickly that that was not the most efficient way to do it. You want it. Multiple people working on the same ace. Mm -hmm. The first person on the line is grabbing the product off of the pallet or the u bolt putting it on the table, opening up the case, while the second person might be taking the different components that were now put on the table and putting them together, bundling them to, to prepare the ASIN. Then the next person down the line might be doing the final prepping, whether it's choke hazard stickers, the F and SKU sticker, this is a set do not separate sticker and then putting it in the box. So it's just like any manufacturing line. When you're putting ACEs together and you're doing wholesale and bundle, when we go back to profit margin, bundling is where you're gonna see the highest profit margin. Not those single items, especially in wholesale. Yeah. Bundling is where you're gonna see it, and this is why we develop these processes to grow our business. Yeah, and some ways to speed up your efficiency are as soon as a product is finished box, you wanna put it on a pallet and move it to your shipping station. You know, you also want to track your revenue. How many of you, whether you're just starting, your experience, whatever, regardless of where you are in business, how many of you know on average how many products you produce out of your place in a day? How about how long it takes? Do you know how long it takes to produce your ASINs on average? These are important metrics to consider, right? And we, we never do this. We're, we're sharing this information with you because we learned this and all of a sudden our business began to skyrocket. In the past 12 months, our business has grown 100%. That's crazy. How many people's business has grown? I'm sure a lot of your hands have grown up. How many people's businesses has grown in the last year? Yeah, exactly, right? Amazon's just flooded with new customers. 30 million new Amazon Prime members joined Amazon in the past 12 months because of COVID. Right? And that's not going to change. Those 30 million members aren't going to cancel their membership. So what that's more, what's that mean? More opportunity for us, more opportunity for all of you. And then some of the other internal processes that you need to understand, keep up, competitive sellers, all that stuff on the buying side. You know, understanding your margins and your profitability and then your, your IP complaints. So like that's just like the basics, right? You gotta get down the basics and have your buyers understand all that information. Because it's, it's super important, it's super important. Can we uh, step back to shipping? I just want to touch on something. Yeah, sure. Anything for you. As far as the shipping goes, a lot of people look at, it's kind of like that profit margin thing where we were just covering. A lot of people look at the price of your LTL, your, your less than truck load. Not for, not for anyone who's using uh, UPS, Amazon Partner Carrier, SPD. Keep doing that. That's the best way. But this is strictly for LTL, people that are palletizing their products. Less than truck load, full truck load. And they're looking at Amazon Partner Carrier and seeing this phenomenal price that they can't get from any other carrier. Or maybe they think it's seamless, and so they're selling on Amazon, Amazon will handle that. Why look anywhere else? Well, the reason you want to look somewhere else is because when you use Amazon Partner Carrier, you're using Amazon trailers. 
And so what that means is your product gets to Amazon fulfillment centers, and then guess what? It doesn't go to a loading dock like a private carrier would that might cost a little more money. It's sitting in Amazon's fulfillment center in the parking lot until they're ready to unload it. Mm. How many of you are shipping LTL right now, pallets? How many of you are waiting greater than two weeks for your product to check in? How about three weeks? Four? Five? It's been Prop Q4 like a long time. Six, anyone with six? Give me seven, we've got seven. We got eight, we got one, we got one. My point is, saving those few hundred dollars, I'd rather pay $600, I'd rather pay $1,000 for a carrier than pay my two fifty dollars with Amazon Partner Carrier and have my product there when it's supposed to be at my appointment time and checked in and live on Amazon within two days. Because if you have a pallet of products, how much value is there? For us, it's a full truck, so there's a lot of value there. And how many times can you possibly turn it in a year? If, you, if I could do in two days what many of you are doing in four weeks, that means I could bring in, let's do the math, about 15 truckloads, 15 deliveries before you even get your one check. And over a year compounded, what's that gonna look like? So the thousand dollars for a carrier all of a sudden doesn't sound too bad. Yeah. It's all about that inventory. So before we get to the external operations here, I want everybody to stand up one more time. We're gonna get a couple together. Who likes to get a couple together? I love getting a couple together. Let's do it. Alright? So on the count of three, I want everybody to say, I can do anything if I take action and then scream. So I'll do it. Right? I can do anything if I take action. Ah! Right? You got it? Yeah. You got it? So one, two, three. I'm I can do anything if I take action. action. Yeah! So daily habits, these are things I literally do every single day. First thing, right, come in. We were just talking about profit margin, thinking of a cool acronym to create. You haven't created it yet. Well, first thing I do in it, I, when I go in, is I check yesterday's sales and profits. Right, I want to see if there's any outliers. Who wakes up one morning, who has woken up one morning, and you see, like, wow, sales have skyrocketed. Right, you maybe do, you usually do, let's say, 7,000 a day, or four, 700 a day, and then all of a sudden your sales tripled in one day. Who's Who's that ever happened to before? Right? And you're like, wow, that's so cool. What's the first thing you do? You figure out what happened. Right? You want to know what product it was, if you still have inventory in it, you know, if you need to replenish it, because it's it's generating more revenue for you. So that's one of the first things I do every single morning. I literally open up, I'm analyzing yesterday's sales with the previous day, with the previous month, with the previous week, I'm looking at profit margin. And then another thing I do, which I encourage everybody to do this is I go to my orders tab. I change it from its uh, default of 20, and I switch it to 100, so I can see all the recent orders, and I'm just looking for outliers. You should be looking for outliers of the, the morning sale. So from the previous night to the morning, and what I'm doing, I'm just scrolling first five pages, and I'm looking like, okay, did this listing I just sold 80 of in the past five hours? Maybe I have an opportunity to go to my repricer and raise the price $2 to pull some more profit out of it. Because if it's selling that fast, it means somebody sold out, right? Someone was dominating the buy box, sold out. I wanna eat more, I wanna make more money, so I'm gonna raise it $1.50, $2, and then if I stop getting sales, you just put it back, and you get sales again. But it's a great opportunity to pull daily profits out. And then inventory. You wanna make sure your products are in stock, right, Sebastian? Always, you wanna make sure your products are in stock, and you wanna also look at the products that have been in stock too long. Mm. You have monthly fulfillment fees that Amazon's charging you for products that you're not moving. So typically, if, if we didn't intentionally order something for, for 90 days or six months, when we hit that 90 day mark and a product is still in our Amazon, in the Amazon fulfillment centers, we're dropping the price, we're running coupons on it, we're checking our PPC, our wholesale PPC campaigns, we're doing some sort of discount to try to move this product because we know by the way that we source, by the way that we analyze products, we can find a better product, we can find a winner. But it's sitting in Amazon 
waiting. Too many people just wait, wait, because they want to hit that 20% profit or 25%, 30%, and they're unwilling to drop it, even break even on it, just to move it out so you can find a winner, so you can get that cash back and find a winner. And then buyer messages, obviously, you gotta, gotta check the account health step, right? And that's kind of the last few things. So you gotta check your buyer messages, you gotta make sure you had no IP complaints or any issues that need to be addressed in what, 72 hours, right? So us, there's no real standard that Amazon states, but all account health issues should be addressed to some extent within 72 hours. Doesn't mean a resolution needs to be provided to them. Simple communication that we are looking into the issue and will provide an answer shortly will suffice. As far as your buyer messages go, those should be answered within 24 hours. And if you're not, it will impact your buy box, for sure. It's one of the metrics for the outlet. And then one of the last things we like to check every morning is our strand inventory. If the inventory is stranded, it means you're not making money out of it. Sometimes it's as simple as updating the listing. You know, it might be missing a pack size or a bullet point, and they just want you to, there'll be a little red box around it, you click edit listing, and you just fix it, right? Sometimes you gotta, if anybody doesn't know this secret, this is a good one too, it's not really a secret, but you do You copy the merchant's view, you save it somewhere on your computer, email it to yourself, you delete the listing, and then recreate it with the same merchant's view. And it will refresh the listing and move it out stranded sometimes. So that's an option as well. Now Sebastian's gonna dive deep into, uh, deep into account health here. Who here has any account health issues? <laughs> <laughs> So this is one of the least favorite of my things to do with Amazon and, and running a business. And unfortunately, this is not a task that I could definitely do, at least early on. I needed to dive in. I needed to learn behind the scenes of what was happening in Amazon and why I was getting these complaints, these violations these of, of terms and services. You know, of why brands were claiming products were counterfeit, trademark when they weren't, because the proper information wasn't out there online, Amazon wasn't providing guidance, and so I had to do my work and dive in. You know, who, who here has had issues with suspected intellectual, you know? Yeah, that's a big one. That also is one of the easier ones to fix. And we're gonna provide you some templates at the end of this, uh, you know, we're gonna have to get your emails and provide you some templates at the end of this to go home with. So don't worry, some of the exact same templates that I created, we use for our own business, we're gonna provide to everyone here, so. As far as the Amazon trademark policy for the suspected intellectual, most of that's pretty easy. It, it, they, for that one specific, not the other stuff. But that one, they actually tell you what the issue is. They'll say Disney. So what they expect you to do is to remove the word Disney from anywhere in the list. Title, bullet points, description, needs to be removed. Now, if you're selling a Disney product, when the UPC that is on the listing matches the actual UPC of the product you have, then all you need to do is just search in Seller Central, trademark policy. And you'll see how some trademark issues, Amazon literally updated this like three months ago, how some trademark issues are actually not trademark issues, and they give an example of their own brand, and if you're selling that same brand and it's authentic, they give you a paragraph, which all we do is copy and paste it and say this is an authentic product that we're selling, as, as far as Amazon guideline goes, you put that paragraph in, and then copy the URL link. That's simple, and it always gets resolved. So maybe not the first time, maybe we get the wrong seller support person, but if we send it in again, always get them resolved. Then your other one is your received intellectual property complaints. Anyone getting those from brands, complainants? These need to be addressed. They, this, to Amazon, this is huge. You know, unfortunately, there's some bad players in the game, brands that claim products are counterfeit when they're not because they don't want you selling on their listings. And so they cause trouble. What you need to do if you're not going to hire a lawyer, which many of you aren't because there's just too many issues, you know, it's too prevalent, you're going to need to do is you're going to need to reach out to the complainant. First, you've got to make sure you have the proper documentation. Does anyone know what the proper documentation is that you're going to need when you fight back? The invoice, exactly. Thank you. You're going to need the invoice. That invoice is going to have to have your Amazon business name on it. It's going to have to have the address that you registered with Amazon on it. It's going to have, also have to have the company's business name, the company's address. If the company's website is on there, phenomenal. A way to contact the company, phone number, email, 
Eric, how many times have you got, we, have, we also want a wholesale business. How many times have you gotten calls from Amazon for sellers that have purchased from our wholesale business and they want to verify that a product is almost every open? week? Almost every week, it's an Amazon rep calls me and says, hey, I have an invoice number, blah, blah, blah. Can you confirm that this was purchased from your wholesale company? Yeah, yeah, actually, I pulled yeah, the video back. here and in. If you'd like a copy, let me know. Just cut through right here. They actually check this information. They are checking the information. Just cut through right here. There's space back there. Checking and verifying that what documentation they're providing is real. And too many people have reached out to us that have provided change documentation, to, to put it lightly, and um, they get their account suspended immediately. You know? So you want to have the proper documentation. And if you have that, you're going to want to reach out to the complainant. And you, it depends, you have two sides. These are going to want to reach out to the complainant and tell them, I want to resolve this issue. What way can we do it? Or you can try to fight it. If you want, if they do not respond, within a week you send another email. If they don't respond again, within three days you send another email. Then what you do is you save that, you print it as an Adobe PDF, and you're going to provide all this information to Amazon. And all you, and we provide the template, you're going to just tell Amazon that the last thing you wanted to do was get Amazon involved in this. However, the complainant was non-responsive, and so you had no other choice. Here's the documentation. Here's my supplier information. Here's the communication I tried to have with the complainant, but they were completely unresponsive. And for those two, it may take a couple of tries, but we always get them result. Product condition, we got pro product, product condition, customer complaints, yeah. and authenticity, and a lot of those. Um, now Amazon's asking for claim of action for you know a new or new new product sold as used. Um, however, for a majority of those, invoices work. Just providing invoices. So now two D box labels. How many know? How many people know about two D barcodes for your boxes for your shipping? Show of hands. We got one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. It's, it's weird. It's only course numbers are solid. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, but 2D box content labels. It's an additional label. It doesn't have to be. You can put it on the same label as your shipping label that you put on your inventory when you're shipping it to Amazon, and it allows your inventory to get received in a fraction of the time. Who would like their inventory to be received in a fraction of the time? Right? Because what happens now when your inventory is received in Amazon, Amazon opens the boxes, and they literally have to scan each FN suite. And then it goes into these conveyor belts, and it gets you know split up to these different directions. And some go to this shop, and some go to that shop. But when you start using these 2D box content labels, they just scan this QR code here. They don't even open it. It goes straight to a truck into a different fulfillment center. It literally will save you days, if not weeks, right, Sebastian? Weeks. Our products get checked in within 24 hours. You have to understand that the fulfillment center, they're already so congested. The last thing they want to deal with is the products that they sideline that don't have these labels, which based on our discussions with our Amazon account rep and others at Amazon, within 18 months they're going to make this a prerequisite requirement for shipping out products because the products that don't have this, the packages that don't have this, get sidelined until they can get to it. And there's thousands of products, thousands of cases in front of your boxes, your cases, before they can finally get to you. Versus for us, it's going out of conveyor to its final fulfillment center, whichever truck is at that dock, and being shipped right there. Yeah. It also streamlines your internal, right? The first uh, topic we talked about it, it streamlines your internal operations because it makes it easy, a little easier to package. I'm sure a lot of you are using like inventory lab and you're putting them in boxes and you're printing the labels. You got boxes with no labels over here, boxes with no labels over there. Who's doing that right now? Right? I'm sure some of you are. So it can get a little confusing early on. You know, and it also allows you to turn inventory quicker. The more units you can sell, the more money you'll make. As long as the units you're selling now, are selling when you're looking at this, you have to understand what, what we bring inside of the program, this is, and this is something you can do too to streamline your efficiencies. You're probably looking at the top and saying, hey, this looks familiar. That's your FBA shipping. Underneath, we added the 2D box content. So now we eliminated having to put two labels on every box. We keep it to one box that is fine with Amazon based on their policies. We have not had an issue, and it reduces cost of labels and also reduces the time you need to put that label on. Of course, you're like, oh, what's, what's the difference? But when you're doing thousands and 10,000 and 100,000 different boxes in a month period, it takes up a lot of time. Yeah, we did the math. In a day, we, we, we send out about 2,000 
cases, right? Like full cases. So imagine having to process 2,000 additional labels. It's like an hour worth of work. They don't want to spread it over the call, of course, of all the employees. So you got to be thinking with the scale mentality. Like, because if you might be like, oh, well, it's easy now, I'm only sending out five. But if you can understand this early on, imagine when you're selling out, sending 50 or 500. You know, that's when it really gets to the point.